Callum, once again, congratulations on confirming the top three placing. Your thoughts on today's game? I think the first bit's more important. Um, third place finish. And I, I said it last week, and I know it's been um, repeated and repeated in, in different ways. And uh, my quote, but we finished behind two um, clubs that you would expect to be the top two. We've finished above sides with um, budgets that we can't compete with. Big clubs, clubs that started the season in a better place than we were, finished last season in a better place than we were. Mm -hmm. To finish third is a remarkable, almost suggests it's a surprise. The player's been absolutely top draw. And you know what? We have all worked our absolute plums off. Um, there's been highs, lows, plenty in between. Mm -hmm. um, the 90 minutes today, almost, uh, that's what the season's been like. For us to have finished third, tried not to do it. People say I get really defensive when I talked about it. I remember when I was appointed at the football club, I tried, never ever tried to talk about this. I want to be judged as a football manager. and um, means a hell of a lot managing Chester Football Club. I'm from the city, I've been around the football club. And to be have the opportunity, the first home playoff game <coughs> since the club reformed, um, to be able to be involved in that would be absolutely unbelievable. So it's been a real, real journey. Quite emotive when you think about how far we've come. I, I remember it wasn't universally popular, and that, that's fine. I remember... And, I get told I've had a bit of an easy ride. No, I, I remember that. I remember when people saying they weren't going to get a season ticket. I, I remember that. And now I was told well, when the wheels come off in November and December, no, we've finished third behind a side that will be champions and a side that will finish above us ahead of some really, really strong sides. Um, it's been unbelievable, been unbelievable to be involved in. And that sounds like a pop. It, it's not the adventure that we've been on, seeing the bond between the team and the fans, the bond, the, the reception that they give us before every single game, epitomised today at 2-0 down, 10 men, the way they stick with us. It has been absolutely incredible. And we've done it, set out to finish seventh. Uh, we finished third. And I'm, yeah, probably today for the first time since I took over as manager of the club, it's really, really hit me about what we've achieved. You've just nicked my next question, actually. Two goals down, a man sent off. But then you come back. Yeah, I think we, we didn't play well. I don't think we played well for 30 minutes, but I don't think it was as much of a horror show as being 2 0 down would suggest. We've had two awful moments in the game. The build up to the first corner is really, really poor. And then when you lose your man like that, it's. We work hard on that stuff. That's probably my big frustration to be 2 0 down, to have gifted two set pieces away in the way we have, and to have then conceded from them. Um, and then you go down to 10, I'll be honest, I'm there. I've only ever felt like that once in this job, half time against Kings Lynn, where you're going, wow, everything that could go wrong has. But you just got to get on with it. And I thought that's where the crowd were brilliant. I thought the fans were absolutely terrific. So many times they've lifted us here, lifted us away. Um, and I, I don't know, you've just got to get on with it. And we, particularly Mikey Orcock and I, spend a lot of time going, what are the solutions you could see tactically if you appreciate the tactical side of the game, what we did in the second half. And it gave them a problem. And I don't think they got their heads around it for 20 minutes as to we we ended up playing with 11 and they ended up playing with nine. And you have to try and find a way when you've only got 10 men, which are to create an extra man. And I, and I thought we did that. So it's, it's nice when that stuff comes off. I thought you saw the best side of the players in the second half. I thought everything that was missing in the first half, the intensity, the application, the moments of quality, maybe we should win the game. And that is uh, to think we've done that with 10 men. So loads of analysis, loads to be a bit frustrated about. We were a disjointed side today, we were always going to be. So to have got some sort of result out of the game is brilliant. But I just think it's important now's the time to reflect of we've finished third with two games to spare. It's unbelievable. And I've got loads of stats and figures and numbers that I can I can throw out. And someone's even made me aware today, have we now got more points at home than we did at home last season? That's a question. Imagine if I'm wrong. Chas Sumner or not. <laughs> um, that, that's where we're at and our, our home. I want us to have won more games at home at. I want us to have won 44 out of 44 games. But we've finished third and we're going to play at home in the playoffs. And so, like I say, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to that. Spirit, confidence, however, whatever cliche you want to use. I mean, it all came in in that second half, didn't it? I think it came in 44 games. Uh, I made a promise. I sat in a room not far away from this the first time I was appointed the first interview I did. And I said, I can't guarantee success, can't promise success. I can guarantee a team that will be very proud to play for the football club um, and we'll put everything on the line. And we've done that time and time again. We were 3-0 down here against Kings Lynn, 3 each. We're 2-0 down today, 2 each. Oldham, we went behind, we came back. We went behind, we came back. We go in front. There is, they've just got a massive, massive desire to do well for themselves, which is really healthy for each other. There's a real bond in the dressing room and the football club. And they've just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. We, we made a promise. That was a promise to the supporters, the supporters of the football club that have been unbelievable to me. I, I, 
and like I say, deliberately try not to talk around that stuff. But I remember 10 to 3 before the Alfred and first game, and you're going, right, here we go. All the talk stops pre season, and the reception was fortunate to receive from the Alfred and from the Chester supporters at the away end. Alfred was unbelievable, and I knew, right, we're all in this together. The players are bought into that, and what they've been able to do. Give us anyone in the playoffs, give us anyone home, away, whatever, with that togetherness on the pitch, in the stands, where the club is at, at the moment. It's probably the thing to take biggest pride in, that the group should take the biggest pride in, is that they've breathed a bit of life into the football club that wasn't in a great place 12 months ago. And to be going into a playoff game with that, we can do it. We can do it. And you've, Not, got, you've got two games to prepare. Yeah, I think that was important and that's been the message all week. I think that's why I was so frustrated after the first 35 minutes is we've talked around let's get our future sealed which a point would have done realistically mm. two points the way the games have fallen um we're in training camp mode we've been planning this for weeks going if we have uh three weeks before the playoff semi-final four weeks two weeks one week we didn't have that in my previous job that like i say got got to a, a playoff final last year in a different job we didn't have that we finished the season on the saturday found out our opposition played tuesday night we can really plan and do our work and look after the players physically. Um, and it gives you time to get over a few injuries as well. Yeah, they've been that all season. I'm used to be like, like Kurt didn't play, Willow didn't play, Kieran Coates didn't play. You see that front row. Yeah. Um, it's been like that throughout the season. We'll lose a few more today. I thought Kelly Demar was absolutely unbelievable today and has got through it. Never physically. stopped. You never stopped. Top draws for him to have not had the minutes he's had. Um, really delighted with, with his output. So we're, we're really pleased with where we're at and the plan will start now. And I, I tell you now, every time I, well, I'm fortunate I live in the city, God's own city, the, the best place in the world, I, I live here. When I walk and I have a coffee, I'll be thinking about winning the playoffs. And then when I go to work on the training ground, I'm going to go to Kettering and when Buxton come here, I'll be thinking about getting promoted. That That is what it'll be now. It'll be, it's been an obsession getting in the playoffs. That's what it'll be. We, to have that opportunity, to have two games of the regular season to plan, prepare that three-week build-up to a playoff semi-final at home at the Diva. Um, I just think let's reflect and realise what the players have done they've been unbelievable and to have been a part of that is yeah for the first time I'll come up here and look you all in the eye and say with real pride of we've talked about getting on the bus where well, we've done it and now it's the last push and the last push is can we get up out of these playoffs Th these players can do anything It must be proud, a proud moment as well uh, two seasons with two clubs two playoffs <laughs> yeah that, that's okay I like it when you say things like that you can come again um, yeah, and I think that's the important bit, trying to take a bit of stock from that of, I think when I'm appointed in any job, I won't be the norm. I'm, I'm not an ex-professional footballer. I have my flaws. No one has made more mistakes than me this season. I don't always say the right thing. I don't always project myself in the right way. I do, I learn, I try and be better and I try and encourage the players. I went into my last job, a club, uh, that really, really close to my heart. That, I, like I say, I really grew really fond of and managed in the same way. It isn't because I'm a I'm a Chester boy that I, I choose to manage this well. Always wanted to be treated as a football manager in my own right, good, bad, ugly. Yeah, we were 20 minutes from getting promoted out of the playoff final. That that is a scar that it hurts when you've been through that. And then to buy into what was a massive task. I remember thinking this is a massive job and then I took the job and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and I've come up here so many times and I've talked about the journey we've tried to go on and we've done it and we've never over promised and under delivered. We've just worked so, so hard from literally cancelling holidays last summer and working every single day for the benefit of the football club. Not because it's my football club, but, but that's how you should manage. And that's So yeah, to have had that over two seasons, it's a really good record. Colin Woodthorpe's I think is nine seasons on the coaching staff at three different clubs, so he'll, he'll definitely point that one out to me. They've been unbelievable. The name, Colin Woodthorpe, Mike Alcott, Luke Davis, Liam Stoney, Tom King, the staff, the players, the club. We are in the playoffs. We have a home game. I can't wait. And hopefully a couple of furlongs to go to the winning post. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Well, if you're back, Corrick Ramblay, we can definitely talk about that today if you want me and Mikey Alcott get up. Um, but yeah, the, we can definitely have some puns around, two fences to go, a furlong, difficult, different types of fences. But I'll leave the cliches to you. You do it better than me. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, All right, then.